Thanks everyone for tuning in today. This is the Maharshi Ayurveda Winter Wellness Webinar. I'm Valerie Brown. Our bodies function differently each season. And as we transition between hot and cold seasons, we may even notice fluctuations in our immunity, our digestion, our emotions, our well being. So, just what are the Ayurvedic recommendations for diet, for routine, and for lifestyle to maintain immunity and wellness in the winter? So joining us today to answer this question and much more is classically trained Ayurvedic physician and research scientist from Nepal, Dr. Dinesh Gayawali. Dr. Gayawali holds a bachelor's of Ayurvedic medicine and surgery from Nepal and a PhD from Maharshi University of Management, where he is now an assistant professor and trains Ayurvedic wellness consultants. Thank you for joining us today, Dr. Guy Wally. We're so excited to have you here. Thanks, thanks Valerie, for having me here. <laughs> yes, so we received a lot of questions from all of you, and we will certainly get towards, to those towards the end of our presentation. But for now, let's hand over the, the floor to Dr. Guy Wally and see what kind of insight he has for us today. Thank you, Valerie, again, for having me here. Um, it's my honor to be here. <laughs> um, as you mentioned, um, uh, our weather uh, depends and depends and has a lot of effect on us, our health and well-being uh, as a human being and not only human. Every creature in this world, universe, in this creation uh, is directly, indirectly affected by desh. We call desh the country, the geography uh, and call time, ritu in other words. So Ayurveda uh, has always entertained the idea of how desh, the geography and kaal, the time of the birth or the time we are in the moment or the living. Um, so that affects our physiology and wellness. Uh, as you already mentioned, in winter there are certain kinds of illnesses and the imbalances we suffer from. And in summer, um, in the change of seasons brings about allergies, pollens, and, and, and a lot of variety of things that we uh, deal with. And there has been ample amount of research on uh, what are the effects of weather on our well-being. And um, even some have done, some scientists have even done research on the time we are born uh, has a huge effect on our uh, immunity for that matter. And uh, that helps us uh, preventing ourselves from illnesses. So here we are today to talk about winter. And before getting into the winter, uh, I would like to um, bring about a little uh, glimpse of what winter means in Ayurvedic terms. Ayurveda talks about ritus. Ritus are basically the terms for a season. Um, is uh, as per the traditional Vedic calendar. Uh, which um, is used in uh, different parts of India and South Asian region. There are six ritus, unlike four seasons. There are six uh, seasons for that matter. Vashanta, spring. Grishma, summer. Varsa, rainy or monsoon, they call it. Sharad ritu is the autumn. Hemant ritu is pre-winter. And Shishri Ritu is winter. So here are little variations that you see. There is pre-winter and winter there is a rainy season so every season every ritu is of two months and um, in the time um, transition between these ritus is called ritu sandhi and these transition time are so very important that we are moving from one ritu one season to the another season and there are certain codes of conducts basically and the rituals kind of thing or, or uh, certain uh, tips that one should follow to stay healthy and not um, being affected by the change of season. Mm -hmm. So uh, Ritus, uh, we are talking about winter here. So winter uh, falls in Hemantha and Shishir uh, as per uh, general understanding. Hemantha and Shishir Ritu. Hemantha Ritu is pre-winter and Shishir Ritu is winter which starts basically from mid of November, right today, uh, till uh, mid of uh, March. 
So Hemant 32 is from mid of November till mid of January and mid of January till mid of March will be Shishir Ritu. And uh, these are basically the months where winter uh, is considered to be uh, you know, happening. So these four months, uh, we are basically, uh, we should take care of ourselves. And the tips uh, that we are going to talk about today, that all the contents of this uh, talk will apply to those four months, basically. And talking about winter ritu, winter season, um, pre-winter and winter, Hemanta and Sushi Ritu, as I mentioned, is uh, basically the Kapha season, but when it gets too cold, the Vata also gets aggravated. So uh, I assume you all know about the basics, what Kapha and Vata is, if you don't. Kapha is this heavy quality the water and earth quality in our physiology or even in, in general nature. And water is this air quality, rough, dry, brittle, light, hard. All this, you know, dry air quality. Both of these doses get aggravated during this uh, uh, winter season. And uh, as a result, a lot of imbalances do come. Um, but one most important thing we have to um, we have to admit and we have to take into consideration is winter is the time to rest and reflect. The days are longer, the days are shorter and the nights are longer. So here you are literally hibernating. You see the animals, they don't do much activity during winter. They, um, the nature has built, in, uh, built them in such a way they uh, grow their hairs, they change their colors and and they, they, they deposit their fat, they eat a lot, and, and they hibernate basically. They don't do much activity during winter. So should we do. We should also hibernate, less, less indulge in more activities, not being so much in out about or going out uh, in nature. Those kind of things should be done in winter. And as, um, as we move along in this uh, talk, we'll be talking specifically about what needs to be done, and that's called Ritu Charya. So uh, winter wellness tips will be, you know, mentioned in minutes to come. Okay, so I, I love this idea too of following what the animals around us are already doing. So we should all grow our hair long in the winter time. Uh, well, uh, we have clothes, unlike animals. <laughs> that's true. But the idea is now, what sort of clothes are we going to put on during winter? We have to keep ourselves warm. The whole idea is to maintain the heat of the body mm -hmm. uh, because it's already cold out there and our, our heat needs to be preserved. Um, our, uh, we have to keep our body warm by putting on layers of clothes and you know woolen clothes and, and all that. It's all about keeping the heat inside ourselves and inside our body. While doing that, what happens is our digestive fire gets stronger. And as a result, we might have good hunger. And as a result, we might like to eat more. And there is nothing wrong with that, as long as we uh, make sure we are not overeating. And uh, as long as we are shedding those pounds, extra pounds by doing regular exercise mm -hmm. without aggravating the water. So there is a little tweaks and turns that we can do during winter season. And yes, your, uh, your point is valid that uh, we don't need to grow hairs, but we have to make sure we are keeping ourselves warm. Definitely. Now, speaking to this idea of, of exercise in the winter. Now, a lot of us may have a pretty a heavy exercise or outdoor activity in, in the warmer season, but what about for the winter? What's recommended to change the routine, the exercise routine at least? Yes and no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. and, uh, there is no one word answer to your this particular question because we talk about Prakriti, you remember Prakriti is our build. And those who are more Kapha in nature, um, um, those who already have some heavy build and those who are already, you know, well built and, uh, and have good digestion and have some extra pounds, they can do vigorous exercise during winter. 
and actually it's better for them to do uh, indulge in those ac exercises as long as it is not outdoors and they are not exposing themselves into the cold air but those who are already frail weak and water deranged people they don't need to do exercise that much uh, gentle brisk walk indoor rec centers like we do here in fairfield mm -hmm. uh, those simple generous exercise general exercise you you just have to be very subjective and self-referral you cannot say okay winter is the time where you can eat more so you eat more it all depends on your individual prakriti and the vikriti that we have but in general kapha gets aggravated and vata also gets aggravated to some extent but the tendency is you get to eat more so you get to lose that extra extra weight that you gain during winter yes your exercise can be a little vigorous but as long as you are not aggravating your um, your vikriti your vata uh, or even kapha so uh, you have to be really subjective and self referral you know, what stays of your uh, age of life you are what imbalance you are uh, going through that that all has to be taken into account Mm -hmm. Yeah, just like with all things that a lot of in these webinars, a lot of the information that we that is presented, it's like there's not a one size fits all for everybody. About moderation, I would say moderate exercise mm -hmm. and um, in generally kapha gets aggravated. So moving uh, without exposing yourself in outdoor, it's not like summer, you can go for a run during winter. So without uh, uh, aggravating your vata. You can do some exercise, you can break to some sweat because you have eaten quite good and heavy. You are allowed to eat a little bit more during winter. Okay. Now, is, is the pre-winter and the winter seasons, are these technically vata season and then we're going into kapha season? Or could you explain that to us? They are. You are definitely right. They are technically vata season and they are moving into the kapha season where Kapha gets aggravated, it gets melts, and that's how we have this uh, change of season during the spring. It's best when you're, uh, you are allowed to do the uh, panchakarma, the detoxification. The kapha that is accumulated during uh, this whole season is actually melting. There is a concept of um, heat of the sun, the strength of the sun. That's called dakshinayan. You can call it um, um, summer solstice and winter solstice. So this concept is very, very uh, uh, relevant in Ayurvedic uh, Samhitas. The northern solstice or the Uttarayan, where the sun, when it is in the northern hemisphere, it gets, um, it gets stronger. So that happens around uh, mid of winter. From Shishiritu, we call it, that Shishiritu, it actually, the sun starts to move into the northern hemisphere, which will start to melt everything down. So from the, from the start of Sishi Ritu till uh, the end of Grishma Ritu, you will have kind of a northern solstice or Uttarayan. The sun is becoming brighter and brighter and um, um, heavier. So in this period of time, your bala, your strength, your core strength is getting weaker and weaker and weaker. And from the starting of Grishma, the summer season, till the start of the Hemanta and the end of the Hemanta, the pre-winter, your um, the sun in the hemisphere, this earth, this uh, atmosphere is going towards the southern hemisphere. So uh, the, we are getting less and less sun, and it's the you know big right beginning of the winter. And during that season, your strength is becoming small. again. Uh, you are regaining this strength. So winter is the time your body is the strongest. Mm -hmm. Your body is the strongest, and as a result, your your agni, your digestive fire, is the strongest. So um, that's why you get to do some exercise. Yes. Mm -hmm. right. Wow. Now, keeping that that agni strong, digestive fire strong. What kinds of diet recommendations are we following in the winter? Different than summer, I assume. Exactly different than summer. In summer, you are not allowed to eat heavy and you know you are supposed to eat light and you know uh, preserve your energy because your body is the weakest at that point in winter in order to uh, keep your body stay warm and healthy uh, you need to you need to 
eat something substantive, something nutritive at this time. You are allowed to, I would say, pretty much everything you can eat, but you know, as long as it does not, does not go against your dosa type and your vikriti type, uh, you can eat a little more uh, quantity of food. Um, the general diet are those that do not aggravate your kapha and vata. So you are allowed to eat a balance of, of course, we all need a six taste of food, but basically you can take more of a sweet, sour and salty uh, mm -hmm. food. And um, as always with any season, you are supposed to eat well-cooked, warm, unctuous, moderately spiced food. Um, as, but as I mentioned, you, are, you can have a little bit of a substantive nutritive food during winter because the agni, the digestive fire, is the strongest mm -hmm. and it is uh, capable of di digesting those uh, food. For example, um, urad dal, the black gram, uh, is a heavier, heavier kind of dal, but you are, uh, you are supposed to take that during winter. Mm -hmm. um, sweets like jaggery and um, sweet potato, uh, you know, all these things can be taken during winter. In fact, there is, um, when I was talking about this solstice, northern solstice and southern solstice, during this change of season, uh, as per Vedic calendar, there is a, there is a particular day called Makar Sakranti, where the, excuse me, where the sun actually moves from, uh, moves towards the northern hemisphere. In that particular day, there is a culture in Vedic uh, calendar where you are, you are supposed to take a uh, heavy khichdi with made with urad dal and the black black gram and a lot of ghee. Um, of course, in order to help with that digestion, digestion, you are supposed to take some. And ginger and all those kind of things with that dal, that khichdi, and and sweets, and jaggery, sweet potato, all kind of things. So the whole idea is to you are allowed to eat a little substantial. You are allowed to eat a good balance of protein, fiber, carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are also equally needed during this time, um, and more than ever and throughout the year. So yes, as long as you are not aggravating your dosa type and, and dosa imbalance you are pretty much allowed to eat all kind of fruits mm -hmm. and food grains uh, and a balance of everything um, but you know again being self-referral is so very important you don't want to eat um, very spicy food moderate spices like um, dried ginger cinnamon clove black pepper coriander seeds cumin seeds fennel seeds are good and and some Good fruits like citrus fruits that uh, are help that have a lot of vitamin C and that they actually help um, building up the immunity against flu and cold and runny nose, upper respiratory tract infections, all those problems with respiration. And these things um, can be taken, and as I mentioned, pretty much everything can be taken and in a good amount, you know. Um, but uh, without aggravating your dosa type and imbalance. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, some of these imbalances that you mentioned here, um, flu season, we know that that is upon us and people yeah. get cold this time of year. And yeah, we see a lot of respiratory imbalances. Could you give us some insight on that? What type of imbalances are those and why do they seem to flare up around this time of year? These imbalances, uh, basically, these imbalances are kapha and vata type of imbalances. Okay. Vata being prana vata, the uh, responsible for respiration and even stress. Uh, and kapha being the mucus, the pleural fluid, the all kind of fluid that occurs in our upper part of the body, sinuses and all these things. Um, these get aggravated, uh, in, of course, when it is the season. Um, and they have to be prevented. Uh, otherwise, uh, of course, it gets uh, worse. And um, these these seasons, um, this uh, winter season affects vata and uh, kapha uh, dosa, and there is high chances of having those kind of imbalances. And uh, I need to bring out this point, even though it's a kapha season. Vata is the main culprit everywhere and no matter when, which time of the year. There is a verse in Ayurveda, 
pittam pangu kafam pangu pangavo manadhatava vayuna yatraniyante tatra gachati megavat. That means pitta is lame, it doesn't have legs. Kapha <laughs> is lame, it doesn't have legs too. And so are malas and dhatus, they can't move. It's the vata. Vata is the main culprit that actually moves and takes these doses and dhatus and malas everywhere and that's how it gets aggravated. So um, not only during winter, every time of the year, any time of the year, any kind of imbalances, the main goal of any treatment should be to control this vata. Vata should be the main culprit always. Uh, as a matter of fact, in Ayurvedic Samhitas, uh, they say there are 80 different types of imbalances that are caused due to vata dosa. Uh, 60 types of imbalances are caused due to pitta dosa and merely 40 types of imbalances are caused due to kapha dosa. And all these imbalances are particularly related to uh, their nature. What kind of imbalances happen uh, because of vata? Dry bones, dry skin, you know, problems with uh, movement, cracking joints and, you know, irregular hunger. Um, yeah, vata stays of life during elderly stays, they do happen. Like in the kids, um, you have respiration problems, mucus, runny nose, and mm -hmm. difficult to lose weight and constipation also. So these type of things also happen. And in general, this is the tendency during this season Anyone who has dry skin, their skin, skin may get drier. Anyone who has a bone problem, joint problem, they may get worse. And so it is very important for them to look after those um, imbalances and imbalanced doshas. Mm -hmm. There are simple things that we can do. Okay. Uh, as we brought out in the early on of this session that keeping yourself warm is very important because kapha and vata, they don't like cold. Um, so keeping yourself warm and in order to prevent from the vata uh, imbalances uh, doing abhyanga all massage or or you know exposure to some warmth uh, warm oil um, preferably sesame oil if that suits you um, that that routine proper daily routine and i know it you know the nights are longer and people tend to sleep more and it's okay to do that but some basic routine like when you wake up um, you know, drink warm lemon honey water, preferably, and making sure that honey is not heated. It just has to be under just warm water because honey is also kapha is scraping. It helps reduce the weight too. Uh, those kind of things, simple, you know, drinking, sipping warm water throughout the day, uh, spicy tea, fennel, cumin, coriander tea throughout the day uh, and we have some uh, some teas uh, in mapi like sniffle free tea bata tea kapha tea these kind of things uh, sipping them throughout the day basically to prevent the uh, the prevent the warmth from fading away or pre pre protecting the warmth of the body similarly oil application in the body uh, oil pooling gargling uh, warm you know we call it gandusha and kavala like swishing warm sesame oil and abhyanga to, to you know, protect your vata from aggravating. And at the same time, garshana for those who can, uh, who have bulky bodies and who want to lose some pounds, mm -hmm. uh, followed by moisturizing, right? Mm -hmm. So those things, are thing, uh, those things can be done. Similarly, exercise we brought about, uh, we talked about how exercise plays a vital role. If, um, if the... Uh, Prakriti or the Vikriti does not allow to do the vigorous exercise, then moderate exercise, gentle yoga, asanas, brisk walks. Uh, if not in nature, you know, days when there are bright sunny days, you can you may go in nature, but um, but if it is too cold, it's good to be running the treadmill also. Even you know, mm -hmm. just some exercise, some movement is needed. Uh, that kind of things uh, are to be done um, before you know considering the even herbs. Um, uh, winter is the time where nights are longer, so you are not allowed to take daytime naps. So make sure you are not taking any naps, even though you know you may you know have a tendency always. And you can, as I mentioned, you are allowed to eat substantial food, balance of protein. It's okay to take some protein as well during this time of the year because it it digests well and 
going to bed um, regularly and waking up regularly. Those basic things have to be fulfilled. And then, of course, in order to uh, you know, build up the immunity, you can do some uh, herbs like one of the one of my biggest um, herb uh, I would I would encourage everyone to take is Chevan Pras or or in Mapi we call it um, uh, Maharshi Amrit Kalas Nectar Pest um, Nectar Pest I'm very fond of this pest it is wonderful and my personal experience I have a three three year old uh, son mm -hmm. uh, whom I give one teaspoonful uh, I give one teaspoonful once a day but uh, you can give half teaspoonful twice a day for kids and one teaspoonful twice a day for adults. This actually is a very good, it's, it's not only Chavan Price, it's much more than that, but if you consider it as a, as a um, protector of uh, uh, you know, winter weather, it's wonderful. The moment you give it to your kids or take it yourself, you'll feel the difference, you'll notice the difference, your runny nose is sniffle, those kind of things will go away. Um, and uh, clear breathe oil we have uh, at MAPI. What about the nas nausea oil? Is that also recommended? Yes, nausea is actually good during winter and during cough season, um, um, but make sure before taking any kind of nausea, you are supposed to soften your nostrils. So mm. taking a couple of minutes of warm, um, warm uh, vapor is mm. very good. You know, just taking vapor and there are steam inhalation machines so everywhere you can find it. Just taking a steam inhalation for a few minutes and then putting the nausea oil. One tendency is people who are very fond of it, they do it very regularly, ev almost every day. I would not encourage that. Just, uh, you know, just to make sure you are just softening, let, you know, you're preventing the dryness is okay. Just putting a dab of oil inside, that's okay if sesame oil works. But sometimes, many times this nausea oil, sometimes they might have strong aromatic oils in, in their essential oils in there also. So putting it uh, in a whole amount on a daily basis is not recommended. Mm -hmm. Definitely to prevent the water drying in, uh, from drying it out and preserving the, the you know, the, excuse me, preserving the, um, uh, this health, the mucosa is good, but overdoing, not only nausea, anything, if you overdo, it's not recommended in Ayurveda. Ayurveda is always about moderation. Mm -hmm. you can pretty much everything, but in moderation. Mm -hmm, definitely. Now, what about if, say somebody does catch a cold or they get whatever is going around school or the office or something like this, what kind of um, recommendations do we have for these kind of things? Yeah, that's very interesting. It again depends on if they do not have any underlying, you know, problem, mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, it depends on what stage of life they are. Uh, for especially for the kids, it's much more easier for them to uh, catch cold. Uh, mm -hmm. Younger kids, the toddlers, when they go to even my own son goes to childcare, and uh, it's so very important for us to understand that. Uh, not always, you know, taking herbs and medications help. Keeping yourself warm is so very important. You have to make sure your kids are, uh, or even you are bundled up during winter. And of course, uh, always preferring warm water, always. Um, no matter what season, especially in winter, you have to take warm water. Never entertain ice water during winter. And again, if you are a pitta predominantly person and you want some cold, that's okay. Cold water is fine for you. But in general, we are talking about general things here. And uh, just sipping warm water throughout the day and um, giving things like honey. Honey helps. Uh, individual spices, cooking with the spices like cinnamon, uh, dried ginger, clove, pepper. These uh, spices also do help. And as I mentioned, Amrit Nectar Pest is a wonderful supplement to give your kids and take it yourself. One recipe I would give would be a turmeric uh, golden milk recipe. You probably have uh, you know, talked about it before, but it's a, it's a very simple recipe. Those who are not allergic to dairy, you can take um, cow's milk boiled. Always make sure your milk is boiled. 
So boil it for a couple of minutes and then once it cools down a little bit, not way too cold, uh, when the boiled milk cools down to a certain extent, then put a, um, a teaspoonful of uh, honey, sorry, uh, you can add honey actually, and uh, turmeric. Turmeric is the main important thing here in golden milk, right? So you can have a little bit of honey, a teaspoonful of turmeric, and uh, people might prefer doing a little pinch of nutmeg powder also, that also totally works. So take that uh, turmeric milk uh, every single day and you would be much better uh, uh, fighting against the cold and sniffle. And again, it's sipping these kind of teas, uh, sniffle free tea, water tea, coffee tea, or simple warm water throughout the day instead of, you know, if you don't have anything else. And herbs like you can see the herb I have here is Tulsi. It's wonderful to have in your homes. Tulsi is a great tea. You can just boil um, a cup of water and make a tea out of Tulsi. You can put some leaves of Tulsi and if you have a hard time growing it throughout the year, then you can dry the fresh Tulsi ear leaves and dry under the sun, you know, under the saddle uh, and then keep it, store it uh, and then put a pinch of um, uh, uh, black pepper, um, cook, with the, cook it with um, some cardamom powder or just whole cardamom. Uh, clove, a uh, long paper if you have, and, and drink it. And if you don't like the taste, add a little bit of honey after it is a little bit cooled down and take it as a tea. That helps too. Definitely. These sound like really nice nourishing drink recipes for us this winter. Now, any kind of final, final thoughts, Dr. Gaiwali, or recommendations, um, encouragement that you could share with us? Well, I think we have covered pretty much about winter wellness. The whole idea is, of course, to find out who you are, what is your build, your property, and what is the vikriti, the imbalance you have. That is so very important before blindly following all of these recommendations. Once you have a pretty solid idea of what is your property and what is your vikriti, and then we we are literally talking about general winter wellness here. So in general, winter is the time you are supposed to keep preserving your energy so, can, so that you can do better during summer when there is the loss of energy. Uh, so it is the time to hibernate. It is the time to self-reflect, maybe um, social gatherings, but indoors and not going so much outdoors. And maybe you know, diving into yourself, meditating helps a lot. Um, and there is one thing that we should have brought out. Um, many people have uh, a seasonal affective disorder, SAD, or even some people call it depression. The, you know, weather makes them feel depressed during winter. So uh, in order to deal with those kind of things, you have to be very self-referral. You have to dive into your your inner core and let that inner healing power um, do it work, you know. Uh, so you have to self-reflect, move inwards, and uh, find out, um, you know, what's going on with your body. And once you uh, are settled in that situation, then all these things are very, very, you know, um, supplementary. You have, you, we have always known we have to keep ourselves warm, but not always we do what we know. So it's so very important to um, put your attention on these small things that we have always known for, uh, for you know, our lifetime, but we never paid much attention to. Preserving the heat of the body, sipping warm water, not dwelling in uh, cold weather, not going out and about so much, and eating for your hunger, not skipping meals at least during winter if you, uh, if you are a pitas person, never do skip meals because your agony is strong already. So if you say, oh, I'm going to go, I'm already putting on some weight, so dieting would be best, maybe not. Um, so doing all these things like abhyanga, garshana, dry massage, and there's a lot of information already in our website, I guess, 
and mappy.com blogs and all the authors and well-known people have shared so much about uh, these uh, recipes so yeah just these general things that we already know if we put much attention on it i think we are uh, well off and um um, simple, you know, cooking recipes, simple spices, not a fancy, fancy thing. And um, these things will definitely matter and they do matter. They do matter. So if we just put our attention on it, we will definitely be able to tackle the winter any kind of way. Mm -hmm. I love that. That's great encouragement for us. And that idea of rest and reflect, like you said at the beginning, is it sounds very nurturing for us during this season. So thank you, Dr. Guy Wally, so much for your insight today and for joining us. Yeah. And for everybody that tuned in to this webinar, we also appreciate your time. Please let us know if you have any webinar topics that you would like for us to cover. We'd love to hear from you and hear what you'd like to learn more about. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in.